It's retro time! It's not super retro time, but uh, this guy here is pretty retro. The Poly Mega. This thing was first announced back in like 2017 as the Retro Blocks. It's a console, sort of, that can have modules that slot in and slot out to change what you can plug into it. So in this case, it just comes with a CD-ROM drive, actually a DVD-ROM drive, but uh, there's other modules here that we'll get into. People have actually accused it of being a scam and vaporware for a long time now because like it, it missed its first ship date in April of 2019. It finally shipped in September of 2021, which is a long time, but here we are. It actually came out. You can actually buy it. It's currently back ordered, I think, till um, the second half of this year. This here is the base unit PM01. It comes with a uh, standard wireless controller, which I think is a GameSir BM1 or something like that. You can play classic compact disc games. You can digitize your game collection. Yes, this thing actually lets you rip your games to the internal storage of the console. So you don't have to wear out the contacts on your classic games, which is actually like straight up a problem. Can you do that with your CD games too? Because that's another thing, CDs, they will scratch up. It's online ready with built-in Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and ethernet. You get instant access to box art, screenshots, metadata, and more for thousands of games with a robust onboard game database. No internet connection required. That's actually kind of interesting. Because as far as I know, this actually comes with a 32 gig eMMC storage module for the operating system and everything. So it must be able to fit all of that into that if that is just completely on board. I am curious what this looks like and how it connects together and what's inside. Cause this is just an, this is a PC. Like this thing runs an eighth gen Intel processor. There's the poly mega and it came out with the foam. It got here in one piece. Actually, no, in two pieces. Look at that, I love it. We've got a little box in here, which presumably has the cables and stuff. Here's our GameSir control pad, branded Polymega, and what's this? Oh, a little USB drive thing. Oh, this must be the dongle for the Polymega controller. Instruction manual, HDMI cable, the actual power brick, which is provided by FSP. This is a 12 volt, 6.25 amps, so that's a 75 watt. It turns out this is the GameSir G3S. It's lightweight, sticks feel okay. Triggers are a little bit spongy, like they're a little bit stiff. Uh, D-pad feels a little weird. So these expansion units, this one is just, I think this is literally just blank. That just slides onto these rails here, which feels pretty nice. Then on the side, we've got this ejector button. So we just push that and it comes off. This connector here is supposedly proprietary. I get that this is the M.2 bay, but I'm not sure why there's a peel on it, but uh, you know. Uh... Around back, we've got DC in, HDMI out. That's gonna probably be HDMI 1.4 uh, network. That's gonna be gigabit. And they've got an SD card slot. Okay, I have an SD card here, micro SD. I'll just go ahead and slot that in now. Hopefully, I'll be able to dump some ROMs. In order to do that, we need modules. This boy here is the power element module set. This is for the NES slash Famicom. Okay, little locking points, and there's the other side of that connector. And in here, we have an NES controller, controller? Cartridge port. The controller ports are over here. And yes, those are NES controller ports. And this is an NES controller. Ooh, that's that feels kind of creaky. The pins aren't fully aligned in the holes. It's actually a problem with aligning up with these holes. You can use other controllers though. This controller though, oh, it doesn't feel nice. This feels a lot nicer. The buttons don't feel as nice. They don't snap quite the same way. All right, let's get into the next one. Super gaming starts now. This is the Super Nintendo module. Oh, that, that's weird. It's got like bulb like shapes on the back here. They have the original controller connector. Oh wow, is this also no? It doesn't feel like these are very well anchored. Uh, do you want to get me an iFixit kit real quick? The reason I took it apart, you can actually see the uh, the ICs and the uh, cartridge slot and everything here, was I wanted to take a look at these ports and apparently they are just on there with uh, these rather robust po like posts, which is similar to how it was on for the original hardware. But the original hardware also had like plastic housings kind of clamping it in. So you were distributing that force a little bit more. You can see 
how it kind of just moves. You know you've done a good job when you always have a leftover screw. Now it's together. I am a Sega kid. The Mega Element. It's based on Kega Fusion, but it's like a new version of Kega Fusion. They actually got uh, Steve Snake to actually like update it. Oh, this, this feels weird. This whole thing is like super curved. I'm not sure if I like that or not. Perfect. It's so unstable. Look at that. Finally, the turb, eh, I bit my tongue. The turbo element. This is for the PC Engine and Turbo Graphics 16, as well as the Super Graphics, I guess, as well. These buttons feel really far away from my thumb. Uh, yep, that feels weird. It doesn't feel great. Oh no, there's no cartridge slot. Yeah, there is. PC Engine games slash Turbo Graphics 16 games came Whoa. on cards. Hue cards, they called them. So let's power it on and see what we can make it do, shall we? But first, Let's talk about our sponsor, Karma. Karma is a free app and browser extension that uses sophisticated AI and machine learning technology to improve your shopping experience with over 50,000 stores. Karma scans the web for coupons and applies them automatically at checkout, meaning you'll always get the best coupon code or price drop. You can create shopping lists to organize your purchases and shop more mindfully. Receive real-time notifications when products go on sale or come back in stock and earn cash back from select retailers when you shop while using Karma. Check the link in the description box below to sign up with Karma for free today and start shopping more smartly. All right, first time boot. We've got the controller. It is lit up here on the right, like it says. I think that indicates player one. 1080p 60. Oh, we can do 1080p 120. Interesting. Oh, hey, there, there's actually stuff on it. There's no games in there. So let's just format it. All right, let's try the most difficult system to emulate first, that being the Sega Saturn. Oh, hey, it picked it up right away. So, well, not right away, but after it figured out what it was, Daytona USA, right up there at the top. So I can manage that. I can add to my collection. I can add to the collection and install to the local storage device. Let's play it. Oh, start classic mode with save states and other enhancements disabled. Oh, okay, so it has enhancements out of the box. What enhancements would those be? Oh God, the frame rate and the draw distance. But that's actually, it's, it's the version that I'm playing. Ew. Oh God, what, what's happening? Did the controller glitch out? Like I couldn't stop turning. I'm not familiar with this version of Daytona other than the fact that it's actually pretty terrible. Um, but it seems to be working okay. Oh, never mind. And you can save state, you can load state. What can I do with settings? Virtual display, what? Screenshots, so virtual display. Okay, so I can adjust. Oh, okay. So I can add filters and stuff. So this is like RGB. This is RGB plus curvature to kind of make it feel like you're you're looking at an <laughs> old school. To make it curve? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Resident Evil 2. There it goes. Resident Evil 2, Leon. Uh-oh. <laughs> I don't actually know the controls to the game anymore. So this is a problem. Uh, I don't actually remember where to go. All right, we'll just not put that in the video. <laughs> However, I did notice I do not have DualShock. Now, I don't know if that's an emulator thing or if that's this game, if this version of the game just doesn't have DualShock support. Oh, analog on, rumble on. Now we will restart the game. I still don't seem to have DualShock. I don't think I'm gonna spend any more time on that. Oh yeah, I do have a light gun game, Jono. I've got lethal enforcers here. I didn't need it, but I just put the uh, Sega adapter on there. I'll just throw a Virtua Racer in there. Yeah, okay, cool. So I can play both of these. Let's uh, add to collection and install on the external storage. I wanna see what happens. I wanna see if that shows up as a ROM on the external storage. If so, oh, this is good. This is a legitimate way to play your games without having to deal with cartridges. All right, let's play this straight off of the, straight off the console. I don't, you can also patch the games too. And it works. This is based on Kega Fusion. That's the emulator that's running right now. So, Virtua Racing is running off of the internal storage now, or actually off of the SD card. Meanwhile, I decided to plug this in because why not? Yeah, there we go. I warn you, I'm not any good at this game. Responsiveness seems really good. I don't see any like major graphical glitches, if anything. The actual like input lag seems pretty good to me. Like I don't feel any input lag when I'm like touching the controller like this. Yeah, this this is what passed as like the next generation back when the Sega CD first came out. I don't even know what, if anything, I'm doing. He, he gave me a hug. If I launch this game, this game has save data. I'm not sure about the uh, FE RAM in this cartridge or FRAM or whatever it is. Does it have my saves? No, hang on. 
Is this directly reading the cartridge or not? Because I didn't install this. Is this in RAM or is it in the cartridge? Ugh. Yes. It was in RAM, I think, because it still kept playing for a little while after I pulled it. Let's try out a different console. Super Nintendo. Game media. Yeah, I don't think this is gonna work. This is Super Mario All-Stars. Uh, Mario All-Stars should work. Wait, what? Is this just not working? <laughs> no, not this time. I think this module's DOA. Oh, I did take it apart. All I did was take the casing off. I was really hoping for all of these to work. I didn't try out the Turbo Graphics one. I only have two games for that anyway. But none of my games worked on the Super Famicom one. And I don't think it's because I took it apart, unlike Jono, who does think that's because I took it apart. I guess one last thing. Do you have an SD reader on your laptop there? I want to see if my 32X game, Virtua Racing, came over when I installed it onto this here SD card. Okay, it looks like it's in FAT32. RBXB file. So that's a proprietary format. Well, yeah, it makes it so you can't share it, which is good for, you know, copyright holders and stuff, but it also means that anything you back up is dependent on you still having this console later on down the line. It's kind of like a you were so close moment, you know? Because having the ability to dump your games or run them directly off of the uh, cartridge would have been awesome, but it's not running directly off the cartridge. And yeah, I was still I was still able to move around while the cartridge was out and it was fading out. It doesn't quite do what it purported to do, which is to say that it doesn't quite pass the cartridge through and access it directly the way that they originally said that they that it would. Instead, it does more of a retron kind of thing. So it reads your game and puts it in the memory and you can then install it to the hard drive or the, the SSD or SD card. That being said, it offers a very nice Plex-like interface for accessing all your games. And when you install a game, it stays right there. And it has save state support. It has everything that you kind of really want out of a modern emulator. This thing costs $300 for the base unit. That's with uh, nothing here, just the CD drive. And for some people, like if you're, if you got a big Sega Saturn collection, for example, or, or Sony PlayStation connection, collection, then maybe that would be useful for you. I, I don't know. And in fact, it's not $300 anymore. That was the pre-launch price. Now it's $399. Actually, uh, $449. That's Canadian, I think. Unless it actually did go up. <laughs> if it is, then holy crap, stay away from this. Is it a scam? No, absolutely not. It does what it says it's supposed to do, most mostly. All of those emulators that it has, Mednafin, Kega Fusion, MAME, Messen, those are all top tier emulators. Yeah, setting up a Raspberry Pi sucks, or setting up an emulator on your own, like on your PC sucks. Trying to get your cartridges dumped sucks right now. This solves like most of these problems in one box. And if that calls out to you, then yeah, I, I think that it's worth buying. But if it doesn't really jive, like if you feel like you could spend like the weekend it would require to get everything set up, uh, to start dumping your games, to start doing everything else, then you could do it for a lot less and you would not be locked into a platform that ultimately may or may not exist in 10 years. Yeah, I, I, I like the concept. It's just the execution is so, so, so close. I really wish they could have pushed that little bit extra. Just like you can push the subscribe button so you don't miss any other retro time inspired videos or not inspired videos. Uh, we do cars, we do shoes now. What don't we do? 